and we'll take a question from the folks. I'm Matt Kenny, and here's some Canadian news. I know it can be hard to understand what the politicians are really saying, so I'm here to translate it for you. Thank you. The first question is from David Staples, Edmonton Journal. Please go ahead. Uh, so they, from 2003 to 2019, they identified more than a billion dollars of foreign funding related to Canadian uh, Canadian initiatives uh, on environmental causes. But they had pinpointed, I think, about 54 million on oil sands only. I think people were, some people might have been hoping for more, like to, to get. A, so we have the number now between a billion and 54 million for the anti-Alberta energy campaign. Was it a failure to not get more precise numbers on that, to not actually come up with a final number? Here's how much it was, because we're kind of left between the two numbers. Sure. Well, the, the, you know what? The numbers were confusing to me as well. I read through the report three times the entire report, and I would encourage everyone to read through the whole report plus the Deloitte report. And I understand some of those numbers are confusing because I had to write them down and try to understand them. But I also understand the difficulty that the Commissioner and Deloitte's had in tracing those funds. And what this does is it highlights the need for their first recommendation, which was for greater transparency, greater disclosure, and greater accountability. And you know what? These groups could change that today. Today, they could actually release their records. They could disclose the, where they get the funds and what they're using them for. They require that from public, public corporations to disclose climate risk and ESG initiatives. They could follow their own advice and do it themselves. But you're right, those numbers are, are confusing. There's big numbers. I mentioned in my, my speaking notes, there's big numbers. It's $15 billion across the border targeting charities. Now, of course, some of that is going to be benign, and it's truly for charities. Then he found there was $1.28 billion went to target environmental initiatives. That's when he gets into words, wordsmithing and, and tracing the documents and the funding grants using computer searches and words. That's where it gets complicated. But in that, he found a significant hundreds of millions of dollars targeted to, towards marine planning. Well, guess what marine planning is? That's what led to a tanker ban. That's what vetoed and killed Northern Gateway. It was marine planning. There's hundreds of milli millions of dollars spent on conservation initiatives, creating things like the Great Bear Rainforest. Well, to my understanding, you can't build a pipeline through the Great Bear, Bear Rainforest. So all of those things ring-fenced Alberta and served to landlock it. So that's, uh, you know, again, I just mentioned that because of the difficulty of tracing those funds. But the fact is, it doesn't matter if you're somebody who lost your job and was hurt by it. You don't care if it was $100 million or $10 billion. You lost your job. You were harmed. Alberta was harmed. We need to learn from their tactics, and we need to, to move forward and make sure it doesn't happen to the next res resources of the future. I'm purposefully saying the numbers are confusing to try to make it more complicated than it sounds. Steve suspects some grants are sketchy, but couldn't find any evidence. Legal stuff. All businesses participate in. But we're pissed because their incredibly underfunded campaigns to diversify Alberta's energy sector were more effective than foreign and domestic funded campaigns to keep the oil and gas monopoly on our energy sector. We also believe almost every environmental initiative is directly anti-Albertan. In, in, in terms of this being a nefarious any nefarious activity, do you think that just in the general sense of that word, that the fact that this, he finds that this was an invisible campaign, um, that it was invisibly, that was one of the goals of the campaign setting out uh, the Tar Sands campaign to be invisible. Is that aspect of it, in, in your mind, was that nefarious on the part of the people organizing this effort? I think if you go back to the original Tar Sands campaign document from 2008, it spells out the tactics, it spells out the playbook, all the characters and actors, how they would build on their strength, how there would be funding agencies, how they would utilize it. Um, we, we see that and we saw how the strategy played out. Those funds came across the border extremely difficult to, to trace. 
they they moved to regranting organizations who then regranted out and it shifts from charity to charity from cause to cause from litigator to activist from communications to research it's all over the place and it's hard to trace and i think that was the the point of his recommendations around transparency and accountability and we're going to follow those we're going to do what we can to implement them i think it's important it's not important only for alberta but it's important for all Canadians because that is money that's crossing the border. $15 billion, $2.5 billion, almost $2.5 billion in 2018. That's money looking for a cause. It's money that the commissioner has proven and documented has been used to influence domestic policy, legislation, regulations, regulators, laws, regulatory process. Only Canadians should have a say in that, not foreign funded foundations worth billions of dollars in other countries. No! Nothing was nefarious! They were open about their tactics and sought funding through legal systems! We're just mad we couldn't Google more info on them!